The BMA is committed to improving the health of children and young people. Earlier this year, we held an event with key stakeholders and experts in child health and 40 influential leaders from both within and beyond the BMA attended, covering the spectrum of professional and representative organisations. The event explored barriers to better child health outcomes and focused on five key topics. They looked into how doctors and other health professionals could work in partnership to better meet the health needs of children and young people at their local levels. Sugary and fatty foods have become a standard part of our everyday diets. Fast food outlets make unhealthy foods cheap and convenient, and this, coupled with our increasingly sedentary lifestyle, increases the risk of obesity. A combination of grassroots education and top-down industry regulation could tackle this problem. Doctors, midwives and health visitors need quality education and training to support and inform parents on breast milk nutrition and feeding. Breastfeeding education must shift from the breast to the relationship between mother and child, emphasising the patient experience. The widespread commercialisation of the food and drink industry is harmful to the promotion of good nutrition. Many food products claim health benefits that are difficult to prove and advertisers use celebrities that appeal to children to promote products in a way that appears fun. Industry regulation and education could address this problem. GPs are aware of child maltreatment, but revealing how deep a problem is can be overwhelming unless they have solutions to offer. We need to give GPs the education and support they need to tackle abuse and child and adult survivors need to have their say to get the services right. Occasionally, the media focuses on child maltreatment, but public fatalism is a barrier to progress and people don't believe they can make meaningful change. Children's services need to work with the media to demystify the horror and publicly celebrate the successes. We must shine a light on the importance of prevention funding. The long-term costs of failing to treat an abused child aren't taken into account and ignoring this can have a devastating effect on generations of families. I think we clearly need a government will finally take child health seriously and put it at the top of their agenda. They have to see children as the future, which they clearly are. Um, they are the next generation for us and we should be proud of them, we should value them and we should invest in them. Health and social care professionals need to listen carefully to children, young people and parents. Young people know when they or their friends need help, but may need support to understand their rights and access resources. One of the things is uh, particularly about the role of, of GPs, the crucial role that they play um, as the health professional um, that young people see more often than we, we think, um, who can provide them with consistent support, um, who can see them on their own, who can respond to the challenges that they face and who can link them in to a whole other range of professionals. There are two choices when it comes to poverty. Reduce it through measures such as a healthy diet or mitigate against the medical effects of it, which include malnutrition, chronic illness and poor mental health. Inequalities in nutrition are seen across low-income groups where only small amounts of fruit, vegetables, fish and lean meat are consumed. Action taken on nutrition should focus on these disadvantaged groups. Children with disabilities are more likely to live in poverty. This is partly due to the reduced earning capacity of the parents who care for them. People's attitudes towards disabled children and young people are a major barrier to change. We know that attitudes are still not as can-do and positive because many people are afraid. They don't know how to approach a disabled child or a deaf child or know how to communicate effectively. They don't understand that they, everybody, each one of us, has the capacity, would we but acknowledge it, to make a positive difference, to warmly welcome disabled children and young people and make sure that any barriers to their inclusion and participation are adequately met. 
This Where To Now initiative from the BMA represents a totally new way of thinking about how we take forward a theme affecting people and society today. We've been reflecting on this approach and we want to make the following points. First, the BMA is serious about children and young people and we want to put them at the heart of all of our initiatives. Children have a relevant voice and views on medical practices, for example, their experiences in primary care and in hospital and end of life care. So we need to think of them within a life course approach to policies and practices. So somebody needs to ask, what does this mean for children? So we need to consider the needs of children and young people in all relevant discussions and decisions, not least through developing partnerships across agencies and sectors at local as well as regional and at national levels. And finally, to be child health champions in committees, workplaces and other forums. Children are our most precious resource. They're the living messages to a time we will not see. We cannot afford to fail them. And it's everybody's business to make sure their outcomes are improved. The Growing Up in the UK project is a genuinely positive step forward in placing children's and young people's health and well-being at the heart of the BMA and joining other organisations to improve the health of all young people across the UK.